Hello everyone and welcome. I decided to do this video uh, during the process of the import of my 1974 BMW 520e12 and I thought it would be uh, useful for whoever wants to import a car from the EU into Great Britain. And I mentioned Great Britain because the process is for England, Scotland and Wales. For Northern Ireland there is a slightly different process but many aspects are very similar. Uh, even after Brexit, there has been uh, uh, a series of changes in the process of importing a car and leg legislation uh, sometimes does change from time to time. So I thought I would give you uh, the most update uh, information based on my current experience in importing the BMW. So, why would you want to buy a car from abroad? Basically, in my experience, it was to retrieve a car that I owned many years ago and I've been searching for it for a long time. It also could be the same thing for you. You would like to uh, search for that model that is a little bit hard to find here in the UK and then you cannot find anywhere else but abroad. Or you just look at so many examples in the UK that you're not happy with and you look at the prices and then you go to a website and find a nice bargain. Okay, www.car and classic.co.uk. Yes, let's see what they have in store. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's see. Fiat 124. I haven't seen one of those for ages. What? Oh my goodness, a 1970 Fiat 124 Special T for three and a half thousand pounds? Oh yes! Hold your horses, it's not really that simple. It's not just only the cost of purchasing the car. Have you considered you going there to have a look at the car, flights, accommodation, food, transporting the car to the UK, duty, VAT. You better think about it first. There's so much more to it than just simply just uh, uh, get uh, a flight and buy a car and then bring it back. There are several procedures that you need to consider first. How are you going to bring the car from whichever country into the UK? You have several options. If you have a trailer and um, you are comfortable in uh, transporting a car, you can do it. But you have to take into consideration some uh, legal processes of booking the, when you're booking the ferry about uh, transporting goods from a member state into the UK, customs declarations and so on. Uh, pretty much you have to do that work yourself. The other aspect you, you have to consider is that in terms of uh, legal documents. Uh, every single country has its own set of documents and certain regulations when it comes to removing vehicles from their own country. Some countries might require a certificate of export. So the car is basically deregistered on uh, the, the country of, of origin the uh, local authority will give you a certific certificate of export and then you use uh, that for customs and also uh, when it comes to register the car with the DVLA here. Also, is the documentation in order? Does the vehicle come with necessary documents, such as registration, for example? Because it is very important to, to buy a car with a registration document. If it doesn't have its own registration document, it might a little bit, be a little bit tricky to get uh, the car past the, um, uh, the, the border for whichever country, not just only coming here to the UK, but also leaving, for example, from Portugal, Spain or Germany and so on. Make sure that you have the right documents. Of course, the best way to do that is check with the local authorities about all the legal uh, proceedings that you need to be aware of before buying a car. 
The other alternative will be, for example, to use an agency, an import export agency, who has their own transportation and they can deal with all the hassle, all the paperwork and so on. There are so many agencies online that you can use and get for a quote first. Then the third alternative would simply just contract a shipping company to do the transportation on your behalf. Uh, they will not deal with um, the paperwork from start to finish, but they probably will deal with the customs paperwork when it comes to when the vehicle arrives in the UK. Uh, they have to declare the entry of the of the vehicle, and then uh, they have to work out uh, how much customs um, VAT and duty needs to be paid. So you can use that. Uh, uh, that kind of company and that's a bit cheaper than using a full-on agency and that uh, but a bit more expensive than you transporting it yourself. One thing to bear in mind in case you don't have the original registration documents of uh, the car is when it comes to register the car with the DVLA they will ask for a date of manufacture of the vehicle that's the information that they will use in order to issue a H correct number plate. Failing to produce a registration certificate, then you need a dating certificate. This can only be provided by a manufacturer or by a car club recognized by the DVLA. It's only an authorized club that can produce a dating certificate or the car manufacturers themselves. There are some uh, um, companies online that do certificates of conformity, uh, and, uh, um, that will produce a certificate, don't trust them. It's all a scam. It has to be done by the manufacturers themselves or a DVLA recognized car club. Um, uh, when you need that, well, uh, for example, for a Rover car, which uh, is defunct now, there's, there's no manufacturer there these days, so you will need a car club in order to issue a certificate. I think it's uh, the British Motor Heritage who issue dating certificates for those cars but uh, just have a look online. So now you know how much it's going to cost you, how much it's going to cost an agency to bring the car over and do the paperwork, how much it's going to cost you a transport company that does some of the paperwork um, and, and also brings you the car to the UK. Oh, and then you have already checked online with the legal authorities of each country about the necessary documentation to transport a car from one country to the other. Now it comes the question to actually going and buy the car. You have to use common sense on things like this. You have to make sure that the car is genuine, that the documents match the vehicle, etc, etc. But imagine that if you buy from a dealer. No problem, they will produce an invoice. Make sure they produce an invoice, because that invoice will have a value of purchase of the vehicle. And that is what customs will use to determine the amount of duty or VAT or both to pay uh, in order for the car to be released from customs. But if you do a private purchase from a private individual like I did, I have typed on Word a document, basically a declaration of sale. You put all the details of the sale, who sells it, who is selling it to, what are you selling, make sure you put the number plate, model, uh, sorry, the, the make, model, number plate, and most importantly, the VIN number. And the amount it was sold for, that is very important as well. How it was paid, via cash, bank transfer, check, or whatever. The date, the location, and it's signed by both of you, the seller and the buyer, in this case yourself. And the reason why? It's because when you're going to buy a car abroad, you're not going to register uh, the car in your name in that country. So although the car is yours, you need uh, to have the, the documents and, uh, the, re and uh, the declaration of sale all together. So provided that you've done all the necessary checks, you have the documents in place, now it's time to actually organize the transport from the EU member state back into the UK. For example, imagine that you are a, a EU national that would like to move to the United Kingdom. Well, 
uh, the process it is slightly different because the car will be always registered in your name so it is a different set of documentation that you might need also if you are moving residents from a EU member state into the UK you might have a discount when it comes to uh, uh, VAT but again check the HMRC also before you go ahead you need to check how much your car could pay in terms of duty and VAT. Check with the HMRC helpline, the number is below, and they will give you the information of how much duty or tax your car might be liable for. And then you add all of the costs and see if that bargain is really, really worth it. So I went ahead and booked a transportation company that would deal with the border paperwork and so on. At the time of the booking, I filled some online forms by giving uh, copies of my ID, address, pickup address, delivery address, uh, all the vehicle details, and also if the also have to detail if the vehicle did belong to me or not, if it was registered on my name or not you have to give that extra information because that is very important when it comes to border checks. Because if the vehicle that you are transporting from the EU into the UK is registered already registered in your name, then uh, it, it takes less border checks. And, that's, um, and, that's, and, and that can be actually quite straightforward. But if the vehicle does is not registered in your name, the, it's uh, still registered in the previous owner, then the border checks are a little bit more thorough. And this is why some shipping companies do not deal with the cars that are not registered in, with your name because it's a different permit, different border checks, and the process is a little bit more slow. Uh, and that was the consequence of uh, the, uh, the the Brexit. Um, I'm not getting political or anything like that. I'm just stating the, the facts that were exposed to me by several shipping companies. And they told me because of that, they, they stopped doing uh, uh, certain types of work. Now, the car uh, was in, uh, in Portugal. Uh, a friend of mine was able to keep the car for me for a few weeks. And then when I've, uh, the shipping company finally had a time slot available, then they went to Portugal and picked up the car. They got all the paperwork, transported the car to uh, all the way across to Spain, and where the car in Santander was then loaded onto a ferry uh, that was bound to Portsmouth. The car arrives at Portsmouth, and then, of course, in order to be unloaded, it goes to a car park, and then in order to be released by customs, it uh, uh, needs to pay an, an liability for duty and VAT. Because the car is not registered in your name, as I mentioned before, it does need some extra checks. But my shipping company uh, did the uh, uh, customs declaration on my behalf, which makes the process on my side much easier. Uh, in the end, they just ask me to to type another letter, uh, just uh, about uh, how I got the car, where where I bought it from, what was the name of the the transport company that um, uh, that that, that transported the the car from Portugal all the the way to to the UK. They just wanted a, a letter for me with my signature. And of course, a, photo, uh, a picture of my passport so that they could just double check that there was no, no robbery, no fraud or anything like that. It could be just a random check. Um, it, that's what happened in my case. It might not be the case for, uh, uh, for you or for someone else. So the, uh, the border control, they look at the vehicle registrations. They look at that question of sale. And they say, OK, that's fine. Uh, we see that the, this is X amount uh, that was paid for the vehicle. We're going to work out the VAT based on this vehicle. Vehicle, according to registration, is over 40 years old. 
Okay, it's historic. Okay, that's 5% VAT over the purchase sale. They It was in euros, so they convert to what is the current exchange rate and they calculate the uh, VAT. Now, the uh, staff or the company doing this process is not HMRC. It was in this case Portico, which is uh, like an agency inside uh, the, um, uh, the, the ports uh, that to do all uh, this uh, administrative work. So they take the, the payment, actually the, the shipping company paid on my behalf. They would charge me later for that, of course. Uh, they dealt with those charges. And then after all of that was paid, they issue an invoice and they issue two forms which uh, I can't remember from memory, they issue two forms, which will be described below. So what are, what are those forms? Those forms basically uh, declare what has landed in the UK. Uh, it says it is a vehicle that came on a ship number at a certain time, uh, who transported it, everything, all the, all the details. Basically, it's like you coming uh, from abroad in the airport it's, it has your ID, which flight you came from, what's the flight number, what was the company, similar sort of thing. Those two forms declare basically the entry of your vehicle in the UK and has all the data. Make sure you get those two forms that are described uh, on uh, uh, at the bottom of the screen. The car was released from customs and then it made its way to my house. Okay, not by its own, of course, I have the transport company who just uh, put it on the trailer and then loaded the car. And it is a very, very exciting day because a car that you have been waiting for such a long time is finally on your doorstep. However, the process is far from finished. Just because you have paid all the duty and VAT uh, at border, it doesn't mean that uh, the, the customs process is finished. When a vehicle arrives into the UK, it needs to be declared officially by the HMRC. And that declaration is called a NOVA, or a Notification of Vehicle Arrival. That NOVA declaration can be processed in two ways. If you use an agency or if you are, for example, a VAT registered company, you can go online and register the entry of the vehicle and everything is calculated for you. But I am a private individual. I didn't use an agency. I used just a transportation company that would deal with border uh, paperwork and payments. It's up to me because this is a private import, it's up to me to do the NOVA declaration. And it is a very simple process, providing that you have the right paperwork. Remember those two forms that the, uh, um, uh, the customs uh, at the port uh, gave to you? So you call HMRC, you tell them that you've just imported a vehicle, you have these two forms then uh, the HMRC on the phone will then ask uh, the reference numbers on those two forms. And they said, okay, fair enough. Please send us an email with those two forms, plus a picture of the declaration of sale and a picture front and back of the registration documents. You email that to them with the title of Nova application. And then what HMRC does, they check the forms, which will be on the system anyway, they check the um, copy of the registration documents plus declaration of sale, and they will see if you have paid the, paid the correct amount of duty and VAT. Once they're satisfied, they will then email you a certificate, a NOVA declaration with a reference number. Happy days that uh, took just over 24 hours to receive and it's the first legal hurdle done. Because without that NOVA declaration, without that NOVA reference number, you cannot register a car with a DVLA. And the reason for that is that where the, 
when uh, HMRC produces that ANOVA certificate, they will enter your vehicle details, details onto a database, which is shared with the VLA. When you go to register the vehicle, if the VLA cannot find those details, then there's no way they want to register the car. Happy days, you are halfway there. So now moving on to the next step of registering the vehicle. And this will be very common to all other imports, whether you're moving residence to, to the UK or so on. The registration process is similar to almost every single import. Classic cars, vehicles that are uh, over 40 years old do not need an MOT. But if your car is younger than 40 years old, you need to take it to an MOT station uh, in order to make sure that uh, the car is roadworthy. Now, if you, you, you feel comfortable that your car is fine, then I don't see any problems of you taking it to an MOT station. And how you do it? It is booked using the VIN number of your vehicle. It's not done on the number plate, but on the VIN number. But if you feel that your car still needs a bit of work and you're not confident, don't worry about it. You have plenty of time. Now you are ready to start the application process. Make sure you've got all documents in hand. First, you download the V55 4 slash 5 form from the DVLA website. Also, on the same page, they do have a guide on how to fill a form but we'll get to that in just a moment. In order for you to uh, uh, make the application, you need a few documents. First, the, re the original registration document. You will never get this uh, document back once the car is registered in the UK. Then you will send over a copy of the NOVA certificate. You know, the DVLA uh, is able to check, but just in case, just send a copy of the NOVA certificate. Then you send some pictures of the car, interior, uh, uh, exterior, different angles, and also a picture of the VIN plate. Uh, the DVLA does not ask for this, but um, after advice with many other people that have imported cars, they did say probably it is the best thing. It's not essential, but it does help with the application process. You also include the MOT certificate, if applicable uh, to the age of your vehicle. And you also send a cheque for £55 plus the amount of tax that you have to pay. You can choose between 6 or 12 months, but the amount of tax to pay, you have to contact the DVLA, give them your vehicle details spe specifically about age and engine capacity and so on and they'll tell you how much it will cost you you add that to the 55 pounds and put the complete sum on a check or postal order and put that with the application form the application form might sound a bit daunting uh, because there's so many fields to to fill it looks like but at the end of the day, you only have to fill less than half of them. And this is how you do it. Using the details that you've got from the vehicle registration documents, you will start to fill the V555 form. Registration number, you leave it empty. Tax class. Now, my car is over 40 years old, so therefore it's classed as a historic. For vehicles that are less than 40 years old, please consult the DVLA website. Period of tax applied, you can select 6 or 12 months. I'm going to select 12 and I'm going to include the registration fee, which is £55 plus the amount of tax that you would like to pay. Now, because my car is uh, tax free, I'm only going to put here £55 and that will be the amount that will be on the cheque or postal order. Manufacturer. This one is very easy, BMW, make BMW, obviously, model, as you see on your registration documents, 520 auto, 
sometimes the registration documents do not have the full description they only have like the model as in 520 but i've put 520 auto because that's what it says on the vin plate so my car is a four-door saloon and i'm going to write four-door saloon in here excuse my handwriting is not really the best and then um, according to the type you can put a two-door coupe or estate or whatever build plan most cars are two axle rigid unless it is um, a different uh, type of vehicle like a lorry or anything like that but most of them are two axle rigid and then the color you put the basic color it is don't put any fancy names mine for example is orange don't put midnight blue or a blue sky or a forest green green orange blue yellow red basic colors only then uh, most of information in here you don't need to fill only the stuff that is related to your car the number of seats you put five we put two or four according to the type of vehicle that you've got and then you can skip most of the information that you have got in here the next one you have to put and is very important is year of manufacture in this case 1974 it should also say here on the registration and the next one you move up i nearly forgot to put this one here portugal that's the car uh, that's the origin of the the vehicle uh, you're purchasing from and the the country of the registration documents not necessarily the car you bought you you probably can go to belgium buy a car that has uh, for example uh, uh, french documents it has to be the nationality of the documents of the vehicle here date of tax which is to run from date of registration now uh, we are in the middle of august so therefore i'm going to put this as the first of september and the reason for that it's going to take quite a while for the dvla to process the documentation anyway so i'm just i might as well just put for next month don't put the current month because um they will uh, take some time to do it and you'll be losing probably a month's worth of tax type of fuel petrol and then very important VIN and the chassis number which will be in here make sure that the information is correct double check no mistakes I'm just making one up in here engine number don't put nothing in here the reason for that uh, it's very uh, not only many registration documents do not come with the engine number also cl many classic cars do not uh, ha do not have the original engine so therefore just leave it blank cylinder capacity put exactly as it says on the registration documents do not run it up if it is 1990 put 1990 if it is 1397 cubic centimeters but 1397 do not run it up will base again refer back to the registration documents 2636 CO2, there's no need to put that for uh, classic cars. Uh, cars with uh, over 30 years old might have some of this information, but again, it is not really necessary. Now, date of original registration. This should show on or your registration documents as well. If not, put the date of the document. In this case, it does mention that the car was previously registered in South Africa so you just put here 27 of august 74. date of registration in the uk put the same date as the one on top so uh but the date where you but but this will be relevant because uh, it will take a few weeks for the dvla to issue the documents and then it will start with whichever date they issue the actual v5 here certain information that you won't be needed for example the euro status directive and so on it doesn't really apply for cars at least over 30 years old but might be applicable uh, to cars that are much younger but just check with the dvla now moving on to the second page don't need to put that in there please tick uh, the box your name 
uh, surname don't need to put that in there you just put the address in here post on postcode your date of birth make sure you put the correct uh, uh, phone number and then your email address now it's, it's asking in here is a vehicle exempt from type approval um, and in this case and I said yes to uh, to age uh, cars over 30 years old I think uh, but do check with the VLA they will not need uh, type approval mileage record on speedometer again I'm going to leave this blank because it's irrelevant the speedometer is in kilometers and I'm not going to bother in converting in to miles then of course you sign in here you've put the date 19th of August 2022 and there you go just uh, I recommend to take a couple of copies uh, of this fill the paperwork refer back to the registration documents to make sure that the information is correct and then in the end you have this your registration documents pictures of the car the original MOT certificate if it's uh, applicable and then the check or the postal order with the registration fee with tax if applicable as well make sure you get photocopies of everything you are if you are really keen on uh, getting uh, proper copies you can get a solicitor to uh, verify and certify the copies that you make in order to uh, have them uh, legally approved so make copies of everything put all these documents in an envelope addressed to the vla which you will see the address down at the bottom send it through first class recorded and then time to post this and wait and then you wait patiently for the application to be processed. However, just be aware that while they are considering the application, the VLA might want to inspect the car. This is just basically a random check that they do. You might uh, be targeted or not. This is, I think it's just really to prevent any fraud, uh, ringing cars and so on. Um, and they might want to inspect the car to make sure that the car is real. So they send you a letter and say that they would like uh, a company, an external contractor to come and have a look at the car and make sure that the details match with the details of the application. They give you a phone number, you call them up and then uh, the assessor will come uh, to your house within a few days at the time and uh, place agreed and then just have a look at the car. Uh, a very nice guy they come uh, have a look uh, make a note of the engine number the chassis number take pictures of the car inside outside and so on uh, just to make clear that the assessor has no details of the vehicle whatsoever when uh, you get a reference number from the DVLA that is passed on to the assessor who knows that uh, it's in my case it was a BMW from 1974 he didn't even know if it was a motorbike or so. So when I booked them, I gave them some of the details and then they can inspect the car. They will produce a report and then they will send that report to the DVLA. They compare, the DVLA then compares the report with the application and if everything is all right, then they will issue the certificate. So, just be careful when you go to buy a car abroad. Uh, make sure that yeah, the documentation states uh, the date of manufacture of the vehicle. Otherwise, what can happen if DVLA uh, cannot establish the date uh, of uh, um, if the DVLA cannot establish the date of manufacture of the vehicle? They can do two things. They can reject the application or they can issue the car a Q plate and if you have a car with a Q plate it can be a nightmare to try to overturn it there has been a few recent cases and also some success cases where they were uh, the owners were able to uh, appeal and overturn and 
if you have a classic car with a Q plate, it's a little bit complicated because you cannot get a classic car insurance on it and it is uh, has to pay normal tax and it has to pay VAT as well. Sorry, and it also has, it needs to go through an MOT every, every single year. So make sure that you have all the documentation. The end. And this is the day that you were finally waiting for. In my case, it took from the time that I sent the application process to the VLA to the moment I got that brown envelope, it was exactly eight weeks. And what a joy it was. My car is fully registered in the UK. It was time to celebrate. I couldn't be happier. It was the end of a long process. It, it was a bit stressful at times, but it wasn't a headache that I thought it was going uh, to be in the beginning. Now, next, it was to get the plates made up, which I've done recently, and also get the car in short. Um, just one word of advice that whilst you have the car in the UK, you can insure your car uh, on the VIN plate. Not many insurance companies do it, but you can insure the car on the VIN and at least you have some sort of security if the car gets stolen or anything like that. Uh, still a long way to go in order to get the car roadworthy, but that will be a matter to another video. But if you would like to ask me any questions, if you have any doubts, please uh, use the comment section and do so. And until then, um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.